Good afternoon, YouTube. You want to check sound? Uh, we we did. I already checked sound. You yeah. check sound? We're, we're rocking and rolling. There we go. Okay, we got we sound. Have sound. We're not going to wait. Appreciate you guys being here now or later. Let's talk about this. I've got a. Pardon my manners. Good afternoon, Hurricane. Good afternoon. We would show you Chewy, but we got to turn the camera. He's the horse is over on his own couch. He has his own couch, his own couch, his own pillow in the living room. Um, his own window. His own window. <laughs> he has the only window you can see out of from this this area. We do have to do a shout out to Frankie. Frankie's center of attention right now because he has been neglected a little bit recently. Frankie has been out of the mix. He kind of got his butt taped to the dash of the car and hasn't moved for a while. But now he's untaped and he's doing good. Truth always, what's going on? Good to have you here. Let me put you up on the screen. Well, here's what we're talking about. I'm watching all this tanker monkey, what's happening. I'm watching all this um, stuff with yellow freight. Owner ops are shutting their trucks off. People are going back to the company driver's side, which is not a bad decision in my mind, in my humble mind. If you're out there running for less than $1.10, $1.20 a mile, you're a company driver anyway. You just don't believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, because after expenses and fuel and everything else, you're only making about 50, 70 cents a, a mile max anyway, unless you really have it dialed in or your truck is something different. So let me tell you what, what this stream is based on. I didn't believe 08 what was coming. I didn't believe it. I told you guys a story on the last couple of streams that a guy sat me down a year before it happened and said, Red, you need to sell all your stuff. It's going to get really bad. Pauly P, what's going on? Pauly P, thank you for always sharing out my tweets. I appreciate that. I think that's you doing some of that, uh, you and Scott. But the hardest thing for people to understand what's coming, because most people don't handle stress real well. By the way, if you, if you read the description of the video, I shot 11 holes in one on 18 holes my very first time playing golf. There's a story there, so don't be calling me a liar because it's my history and I'm going to tell you what it is and nobody is going to contradict it. <laughs> nobody contrary, con contradict it. So I'm going to tell you what that's about in a second, but I did shoot 11 holes in one on the very first time I ever played golf on 18 holes. So I did better than 50% holes in one. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why, why about that in a minute, but all this stuff happening, all this stuff coming on. And I've got to watch how I say what I say because I do like I do like our, our checks from uh, the tubes of you. <laughs> Which is a shame, but it is what it is. <laughs> this whole thing that's that's coming is going to – people keep on, oh, it's not going to be bad, Red. You're just mm -hmm. trying to, you know, get clicks. No, no, no. It's going to be – it's going to be bad. Consumer debt, the average person walks around with 40 to 60% of their income is gone before they mm -hmm. ever get their check. And that's before you start. I mean, it's just crazy. Food's gone up. Fuel's gone up. And sh property taxes are through the roof if you own your own place, especially in some of these major cities that happen to be a certain color. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Maybe they're blue. Your property taxes are going to be through the roof this, this, this year. Um, everything is costing more. And yet people's incomes, the average, I saw, a, I should have put this in the stream. I saw a infographic last night that said the real the true because again whatever you're told if you believe it god bless you i wish i could be that naive i'm not that naive i've been around the world a couple of times i shouldn't say around the world i've been all over this plain earth a lot of times i've seen a lot of things i've done a lot of things i have a different perception about what's being told to me based on that some of you still have on your facebook pages you know i got to poke you need to do your part. And you're over here talking smack about anybody in the world. You're a flipping knucklehead. And God bless you. God bless you. I shouldn't call you a knucklehead. Thank you for watching an hour later. But if you got that poke based off what the government told you, God bless you. But here's, what's, here's what I believe is going to happen coming up. Only a few amount of people, and she and I talk about this not all the time. We have a lot of good, good conversations, a lot of great things. How are you enjoying Montana? I'm loving it. <laughs> How are you enjoying Chewy Boo? I am absolutely loving my boo and loving the walks and just loving being outdoors, loving just everything, everything. It's been fantastic. 
Shiny Love expediting really slow. I watch, uh, I think it's Eagle Express on uh, YouTube. He's a, a Ukrainian guy. He has his own express company. He's, I watch him a lot, you know, because we actually, we were looking at doing everything before this all yeah. happened with me. We were looking at FedEx. We were looking at running, come, running out of Chicago for some companies up here, which was the plan before all of this happened. Everything turned like that, but everything is going to turn. Here's what's happening right now. You're being told that at 45, if he goes down, every person who believes what he believes about 2020, every single person you've now become. They've already told you you're an enemy of the state if you're a white guy. If you're a Caucasian male in America, you're an enemy of the state in their mind. Period. End of story. You guys know that. If you're not paying attention, there's actually a, a an alert on the uh, on home land security that the supremacy of Caucasian people is the biggest problem in America right now. You know, so it's funny. I don't feel that way. I feel still like I love this country. I love where we are, but what's coming at you? What's coming at you? Cause right now we're in a good place. Like we're financially set. We have, we have income coming in. We have zero debt other than our cell phones and other than the expenses for this place. And the expenses for this place are just electricity, uh, internet, and food. Other than that, we have no, we're good. We don't have any car payments. Everything we own is paid off. We've been, we've put our nose down and we've, we've gotten here because I told her, and we didn't know this was coming. No, but. But when you jumped in the truck, I said, are you OK? Just run him like because she enjoys the business. Oh, I do. She enjoys I do. being out and just going. And. The adventure of it, the travel of it, I enjoy that the most of anything in my life other than her mm -hmm. is the adventure and the travel. That's why I like I bit down on trucking so much. But we just stack cash because I said, you know what, this time when we start investing in real estate, and I know they're saying the 2030 agenda that you're going to own nothing and be happy. Right now, we own some Montana and we own some South Dakota and we own some Wyoming and we're happy right now. And I own some North Carolina still. Mm -hmm. And we're about to pick up another place up here in, in, um, in Montana. All of this is different for us because we're prepared. Yes. Like I still, I hear Mike in my ear every single week, Red, you need to sell everything you got. Now that was because I had a lot of debt. Everything I own then, everything was, was mortgaged. And I was a paper, I was a paper tiger. There was a book about that in the seventies. I was a paper tiger. I had a lot of assets, but I had everything leveraged. And when the markets turned off, I turned off overnight. This time, it's it's going to get worse because they have told. Matter of fact, I think Schwab's daughter was on one of the uh, WEF sites recently saying, you know, that the, the credit system is coming. You're going to have to, you know, they can turn your car off. They can turn your wallet off. They can turn everything off on you if they don't like what you're doing. That is coming. That credit system. It's already in the it's, it's in China already. It's in China. So yeah. this isn't a doom and gloom. This isn't a doom and gloom. Don't get me twisted. I'm going to let Hurricane read some comments. But I want to show you this because someone put in the comments on that video, someone put in some comments that they said, Red, what, what would you recommend we do? If you've never been through this or if you're still living with mommy and you're a grown adult with college education or you're still with mommy and you've never, ever left mommy's side and, or you're a, you're, a, you're a man, you're a man, baby, a maybe. And you don't understand how to get back up off your face. Because listen, people are going to be taken off their feet financially, emotionally, psychologically. And the average person is one of the reasons we train so much in the military. The average person, when you hit chaos, your first, your first response is who you really are. Mm -hmm. So when you when I see these, these news organizations and they show somebody on the side of the road that's screaming like a little child a grown adult just screaming, just wailing because they're not getting their way. That's who they really are. They're really a little child. They're not a grown adult. They might be 18, 25, 45. They're standing there screaming. They're showing you who they really are. And you have to train yourself to handle stress, handle discontent, 
Handle yourself not knowing which direction to go, but chaos is all around you. Mm -hmm. Handle all the fearful thoughts you get because most people don't like disruption to their patterns. Most people, I remember a girl in one of the dealerships I managed. She was a 24, 25 year old young girl, had a very, very tumultuous life. And she had just gotten married a year before she had, when she got into the car business, she and her husband began making good money. He was at a different store. She was at my store and they were making better money than ever been made in their life. So what do most people do? They go out and buy a big old car payment. Well, they went out and bought two big old car payments. So when the first time came around where they were a little bit tight on money because things weren't going her way that month in sales, she was losing her mind because the car payment was due that she went and chose to get. And I pulled her inside because she was starting to act out on the showroom floor. She was starting to get mouthy at the desk. She was starting to become everything she wasn't to be successful initially. But then she changed her environment and the stress wound her into the ground. And I'm sitting in a, in a back office with her and I made a huge mistake that day. I actually stopped the dialogue with her and went and got somebody because I saw the direction she was going. She was going sideways and she was looking for somebody to blame. And I said, you need to hold on one second. And I went and got a female salesman. I said, I need you to come and witness with me the rest of this conversation. Because women can say anything. And a woman who has lies in her head about what her, what her history is, she will blame you for everything. Dudes, Scorned. pay attention to that. Scorned woman. <laughs> and this woman came and sat down with me. I said, hey, I've just got her sitting here because I want, I want a third person to witness what we're saying to each other. She began screaming like a banshee. She began losing her mind. Middle of the day, we're, we're at, a, at a work environment. You're all, everybody's all dressed nice, looking nice, smelling nice, you know, one of those places. Not like truck driving. She began losing her mind absolutely losing her mind because the stress in her mind now she had a place to let it go you with me because she was stressed she was chewing on this stress like some of you are and i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about this in one second we're gonna show you a screen what's coming the people that are gonna get through this the best how do you get through this red you need you need to understand in survival school when i went through survival school one of the very first things they taught you is once you were in a situation where everything changed, now you were having to escape and evade maybe behind enemy lines or you've been shot down because we were in the AWACS, you know, and now you're someplace you've never been before, you're on the ground in the sense of behind enemy lines maybe or close to enemy lines, because if you've been shot down, it means you were over enemy territory or at least close to their artillery, right? Their very first thing they said was, you're gonna have so much chaos internally you have to learn to celebrate the small things and take it moment by moment. Most people can't. I'm getting witness to my own words. Mm -hmm. Most people can't do that. Most people, they, they have a five or 10 year mindset and they can't fathom having to live day by day by day. Some of the addicts can. You guys understand this completely. You're only, you're only clean for one more hour, one more, one more day, one more week. You don't ever look at things as a long-term gig if you have an addictive personality. This guy put a comment in that said, I'm going to show you on the screen, but I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you the Gallatin River here in Montana. It's a big fly fishing area over close to where a river runs through it was filmed. And they have a sign. I'm going to set this up for you. They have a sign that talks to you about if you if they have a, they have a hanging a helmet, a hanging a kayaker's helmet that's hanging off this sign. And they reference the things that could go wrong based on what that helmet is doing. We all wish we had that in life. We all wish that somebody had something telling us, hey, if this is doing this, it means you've got to do this. Most people don't handle stress. They want to be told what to do. When the bell goes off, go to first period. When the bell goes off, go lay down, Johnny or Susie, and take a nap. That's where most people's brains are. That's why so many people go do a job they can't stand to be around, people they don't, they can't stand to make money they can't live on, and then they're with somebody they can't stand, and they have a life they can't stand, and everything is bad. Does this sound like a good positive stream? I think it is because it's talking to you man to man, man to woman. It's talking to you as big boys, big girls, because stuff's about to get real. It's about it's already gotten real. What they're doing to 45 is they're telling him when they, when they finish with him, 
every person that believes what he believes is also now on the radar. The stream might me, might put me on the radar. I'm okay. Let me put this up on the stream. Let me put this screen up. I'm going to put this up. There we go. Okay. We're, we're still, okay. We're still in shot there. You see on the bottom right-hand side of this screen, that's the Gallatin River, by the way. Let me turn that on so it plays. That is the Gallatin River. You'll see the, the river moving. This is a live camera stream here in Montana. That sign, if you look at it, that sign says the Montana whitewater forecast if the helmet. You see the helmet hanging on a piece of string on the right. The forecast, if the helmet is moving, it's windy. If the helmet is still, it's calm. If the helmet is wet, it's rain. If the helmet is invisible, there's fog. And some of this is tongue in cheek. If the helmet is dry, it's sunny. If the helmet is white, it's snowy. If the helmet is gone, you're in a situation where there's a bear close by and he's hungry. That's why the helmet's gone so that you understand, listen, there's a bear close by. And then you read this guy's comment. He put this in one of the videos. You can go back and find it on the channel. He talks about 08 to 012, and I'm going to lift him up right now. So if you're watching this now or later, sir, and this is you in the comment, you did a great job. And I think I put that in the comment under the video, too. Mm -hmm. My entire life was destroyed from 8 to 12. Ended up unemployed, homeless, mental case. Okay? The only thing that saved my arse was the Bakken oil field up in North Dakota. Dry van in central Ohio, that's where he works now, is dead. Never seen anything like it right now. The company I drive for doesn't want to lay off any of us. And they are making, we are making less than half of what we made last year. I'm headed back to the North Dakota oil fields in a few months. It's a total bust. The recession ain't coming. It's here. Thank God my house is paid for, okay? And I'm going to put this up. Let me put this up on full screen so you can read that if you if you need to. Hold on one second. There we go. It's up on full screen. And I'm going to let you guys look at that real quick. The river is beautiful. Then I'm going to put ourselves back up on camera right here. Let me tell you why this guy is, this guy is totally wrong, but in all the most blessed ways. The back in oil fields didn't save him. He saved himself. Mm -hmm. He went and did. He responded to the stress and the frustration, homeless, unemployed, almost a mental case. I'm getting witness again. I didn't understand this during 8 to 12. I lost, I lost some of my mind there during 8 to 12. I began drinking pretty heavily uh, as it progressed. I was going through the divorce I was, I shouldn't say I was going through it. I was starting to plan on that because my wife at the time said she didn't want to rebuild because we were losing everything. You know, I had spent all she had seen me do for all the years she'd been with me. All she'd seen me do was succeed. And all of a sudden we start missing a payment. All of a sudden the, the air conditioning and heating system went out of one of the apartment buildings we had. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I had never been through that before, but I've been through chaos before. I've been through total, complete disruption of my life before, mainly behind closed doors of the house I was in. And I knew I knew that whatever happened to me happened for a reason and I could get through whatever was in front of me. I just had to adapt to that. And it took me a little bit, maybe two months longer than I planned, because normally I just I bounce against the wall or I trip and fall and I get I get back up pretty quickly. This took me a minute because we had all our kids on the ground having to move from the oceanfront. I was so proud of being at the oceanfront, man. So proud of having gotten myself and my family there. And then this happened. I didn't see it coming. So this guy, this guy didn't succeed because of the back end. He succeeded because he refused to lose. He was very clear on what was happening to him. I'm losing my mind. I'm going crazy. I have no money and I'm unemployed. I've got to, I've got to do what other people might not want to do. The oil fields are not an easy gig. Tanker Monkey will tell you that. Mm -hmm. The oil fields are not an easy gig, you know, and it's not an easy lifestyle, especially up in North Dakota. It's not easy in, in Texas. It's not. I went to Wyoming to pull crude oil in the middle of May. When I went there, I was in Texas for some of that sand pulling. Horrible, horrible uh, situation with the guy that I was with. 
don't ever tie yourself to weak, broken people. Don't. They'll always cost you. I went to Wyoming on my own pulling crude oil and was dealing with blizzard conditions at 7,500 feet for the first three weeks I was there. And I couldn't believe it. I'm at, I'm two o'clock in the morning driving through a blizzard at 7,500 feet, having to chain up. I'm like, it's May. But I was in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. But I was having a blast, man. I was having a blast. And that's where I really trucking for me was was good. I enjoyed the freedom. I enjoyed the adventure. I'm going to let Hurricane talk. I just want you guys to enjoy looking at her for a minute. <laughs> OK. Trucking in Wyoming in the oil fields at 7,500 feet, really, I fell in love with them. Like, you know what? This is this is why I can succeed in, in anything, because I will do this kind of a gig and make the kind of money I was making. Most people won't. Most people won't. I was at the I was at the lax dropping off fuel, you know, at three in the morning with a snowstorm, a blizzard, and nobody else was there. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Chaining up every time, chaining up to go in, chaining up to come out. It was one of those things where just just the doing of it made me stronger. Now, hurricane went through a lot of chaos too before you jumped in the truck. I, I did. I did. And you just chose not to not to quit. No, no. Um, you know, a good friend of mine actually said that most people, you know what they're made of when they're squeezed. So when someone when someone is squeezed, what comes out is how you handle it and what you're made of. And I, I was squeezed pretty hard, you know, and um I went through utter chaos. I lost everything. I lost my family that was my family. I lost financial I lost everything and I was basically although I refused to even call myself I was widowed and I was homeless all in one go and you know we had just lost we'd, we'd lost everything and, and I was alone and I had a family beforehand and um I just refused to quit you know and you know even in the midst of all of that chaos as soon as like it all kind of came down I didn't even give my chat myself in the that right at that moment, my chance, myself, the chance to even realize what was going on or to even look at the, um, the effect, uh, emotionally, I just stopped. I kind of took a very big step back and assessed the situation before I even allowed myself to figure out, Oh, I've just lost my family. I've just lost a husband. I've just lost now a house, uh, an apartment that we were renting. I've just lost everything i've lost 70 percent of our income now all i have is a 1995 pickup truck which was great at that time it was a beautiful pickup she truck. was a great pickup truck and she did fantastic but you know that's all i had to my name and i didn't even allow myself you know i got the news of of my first husband uh passing away in a car accident i got all of that and i held my ground and you know that was like 11 o'clock in the morning i didn't actually process how i felt until almost eight o'clock at night because there was a lot of things that had to be done during the hospital. There's a lot of process that had to be done. There was other people around me worrying about me, wondering what was going on. And I even handled all of that before I closed the door at eight o'clock at night and then finally realized what had actually happened. But I'm glad I did that because I was able to take a step back. I was able to look at the chaos, remove myself somewhat from it and start having those plans of like, okay, this is what's happened. How do I get out of this? How do I move forward? How do I make sure that I'm not a victim? How do I make sure that this doesn't mark me for the rest of my life? You know, like this is what happened and this is where I stopped. And then that was it. I didn't want that. So, yeah. <laughs> so what's coming? If you go back to that screen, let me put this back up on the screen by itself. This guy's comment, the back end saved his arse. No, it didn't. He saved his arse. He, he, he got up off his face with all of that chaos and said, you know what? The only way out of this is me to me to lean into it. Mm -hmm. I got to I'm getting witness to that. I got to lean into it. I've got to lean into this and handle this at a level that most people won't ever handle. Let me turn the let me turn the river back on because I like watching this river flow. You can't live in Montana and not enjoy watching rivers flow. And then look at that sign. I'm telling you right now. In the, in the stream of life, let me put ourselves back up. On the stream of life, with what's going on, the helmet is missing off that sign right now. Yeah. Okay? The bear is looking to finish eating. He's hungry. And 45, what's happening to him, like he said, 
they're not after him. They're after you. They're after us as Americans, the ones that still don't believe in the things we're being told. This leads into my last and final point. I'm not going to get preachy. And Constellation Pegasus said he, he, he's got squeezed hard. He lost a helicopter career. Okay. Wow. Listen, I, I, I never I never saw this coming with my heart. I never saw this coming. And all I can do, I, I don't like the guy that I've become. I don't like the I don't like the energy level, the lack thereof that this guy has. I don't like the lack of capacity this guy has. I don't really have a choice. So I'm doing the best I can to keep everything to myself and keep moving forward because I've had such a blessed life. If this gives me one ounce of being able to look at somebody else and go, hey, do this, do this, think, think about this. I'm good because I've had the most amazing 27, almost 28 months now with her that any, any man, some of you men wish you had a day of this. You wish you had two hours of this. I've had 28 months of it and it's changed me in ways I can't even tell you. Now, let me let me talk about my golf shot because it ties into I'm going to wrap this up in a bow right now. And I'm not going to read any more comments. I'll read Well, I'm going to say, Charles Perillo, what's going on? <laughs> Thank you. Truth always. My 11 holes in one on an 18 hole course. Okay. I can't stand golf. And mainly because my stepdad played golf, the, you know, the most violent human being I'd ever been around up until I left the military. He played golf. He was always at the golf course. The first time I played golf. And the reason I can tell you this, and you've got to believe it because my historian is not going to tell you any differently. She's not going to tell you any differently because she's going to believe what I said and she's going to parrot it to you. Yes, sir. I'd never played golf before. I got 11 holes in one out of 18 holes. You know how absurd that sounds when you realize the only reason you could ever believe that is that that was all you were ever told and I was the only source giving you information. Because you know whose who's story that is? That's the now deceased, at that point, leader of North Korea. That was his story on his very first time playing golf. And that's what all the people in this country who have no access to real news, no access to real media, no access to anything truthful about the world or about their own country, they think everyone lives like they live. Because yeah. yeah, they that's the only source of news they have. He told all the people in the North Korean province, I played golf today and I got 11 holes in one out of 18. He was five foot two. You know how tough it is to drive a, a ball 200, 300 yards being five foot two and you're overweight because he was an overweight dude. So you guys, I want you to remember that. You, you know, If all you do is get your news from one set of people in the world Hint, hint, wink, wink, nod, nod. You're going to have no choice but to believe everything you've been told. And they tell you there's no there's no recession coming. There's no there's no financial chaos coming. Everything's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. We got you covered. Take the jab. It's all it's all safe. Now they're saying that you have three to five years before. And there's what the the died suddenly is all over the social medias, especially over Twitter. Now let me leave let me leave you with this. All you folks that believe Dan Bongino, all you folks that believe that Elon Musk has changed somehow and he's on your side, all you folks that there's there's a there's a saying, there's two sayings. The first saying is it doesn't matter who casts the votes, it matters who counts the votes. That same guy said, if you can't control the counter narrative, in other words, you put whatever you put out, there's going to be some pushback. That's just natural. If you, there's, a, there's a different word than counter narrative. If you can't control that, become that. Become the counter narrative. Put your people in place to speak back against what you're saying is the truth so that they there can be an appearance of conflict in the marketplace that people have a voice and they don't. And the same guy said both those things. The same guy said it doesn't matter who casts the votes. It matters who counts the votes. It doesn't matter what the counter narrative is as long as you control the counter narrative people. There's a different word than counter narrative. I'm losing sight of that right now. All I'm telling you is this is getting crazy. This is getting crazy. And what I watched them doing to 45, not, not one FBI, not one CIA got put in jail for creating documents that were all falsified, talking about, you know, Putin, Putin, Putin. 
and, 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 and doing all that. And like I said, this stream might get me, they might come knock on the door here in Montana. All I know is I don't, I don't care what you lie to me about some things. I think as well, people that have abuse in their life, I think they see through the BS quicker than most people because I see patterns. I see patterns. I see patterns and I see the disruption of those patterns. And that's where you catch people in lies is when the pattern changes up and they have gotten so good at lying, they think they fooled you. So just God bless you guys. We're up here in Montana. Consider everybody armed. We are we are well stocked and we have a horse bear. We do have a little horse bear. Protecting. <laughs> T-Paw, what's going on? Jason Sparados, what's going on? Controlled opposition. That's the word I was looking for, Jason. Thank you. Uniparty, yes. Uh, anthrax now. I don't, I don't. Salty crackers, great news. I hit them golf balls all day, but I can't be chasing them down. <laughs> Listen, I tell you that story because I think about that country and what those oh. people still believe. And everybody in North Korea tells on everybody. They're rewarded for it. Family members, every everyone. You can't talk about what you feel or think or, or want to do. So listen, America is still the best country in the world. I'm still proud I served and did what I did thinking I was making a difference. And getting some Montana breath, getting some Montana air in my, in my body with my gorgeous woman and my gorgeous horse bear it doesn't get any better than this you want to say oddly enough you want to say goodbye in Chinese. <laughs> and, and your gorgeous pigeon and, oh i'm sorry frankie i'm sorry and our gorgeous pigeon because you know it's been a while <laughs> bless him <laughs> our gorgeous uh, god bless you all drupal neiman and bye well actually good evening right now one un <laughs> please subscribe like comment and share the members only uh, I'm going to have another another level of the members stream because we're going to be starting to talk about real estate because even like the deal we're about to pick up, you're going to want to start getting in the game and getting ready because it's coming. And there's still some deals to be had, not in some of the cities. Some of the cities are still too expensive, mm -hmm. but some of you guys and girls can you can you can make your money. You can make your money. And I'm going to put that back up. We're just now getting stopped. We've been here in the house for about oh, how many days? Uh, five, five days. It, but it. it yeah, we're just kind of settling right now. Yeah, so we're finally in our place here. Everything's done except for the windows, so it's been nice to. I told her I said I just want to get up there and see you in your own house, mm -hmm. a house she has title to. I want to see her in her own house, living her life daily with her horse bear, and realizing <laughs> that we're we're okay, we're financially set. And if I go, she's not going to be spinning like she was the last time. Mm -hmm. You know, she's been provided for, prepared for, and protected. Absolutely. And it's it's been it's, amazing. It's been amazing. Red and the Hurricane, we are Vamanos. and Frankie and the and horse Frankies, bear. Yes. <laughs> you guys be good. God bless.